Aloha, Mitzi Goose here, and I just want to show you our latest toy, which is called Alpha Tricks, and it's actually a module of the Embrilliance software. Now, what we have done is to create a generic file with all the different letters, numbers, and special characters so that we could get a sample of all of these for our different fonts. So if you see over here, we've already typed in all the different letters, uppercase, lowercase, the numbers, and all of the different symbols here. And at this point, we can just change to any of our fonts, and it will show us the different letters that are used um, in each different one. Now, if you look over here, we'll change it over to engraved, because engraved doesn't have that many symbols. It only has the and symbol. So if there are missing ones, then it just doesn't show it, because you can see over here are the different letters that we asked for are all here, or the different characters, but they don't show here. And the reason is because the engraved font just doesn't show it. Okay. Among the different features of Alphatrix, you can change the names of the fonts, which I have, so that all of my different uh, sizes will show in numeric order. And by the way, I did have to put 1.0 versus 1 so that it would sort higher than 1.25, 1.5, and so forth. So I like to see those set up in numeric order. I also like to put the designer at the end versus the beginning so that they all sort alphabetically. Now, let me show you another trick that I do with the alpha tricks. Okay, so if you notice here, um, and I'll just change the color because this is going to bother me here. Um, but if you notice, some of the letters such as P and Q, they really should be at the baseline so that the bottom of the rounded edge of the P or the rounded edge of the Q is more at this bottom of the O. So it seems to be floating here. The Y also has this floating feeling as well as the G, the J, and I don't like this Q. It looks like it's also floating because the bottom, to me at least, the bottom of the Q belongs at the bottom of the P. So now since I've typed out all the letters that are available, I can quickly see that. You'll also notice that these are apostrophes and quotes, and I'll prove that by showing you over here. The these should be also floating above, not over here at the baseline. So let me show you how you can uh, go into Alphatrix and correct this. So we're going to go into this button here. No, I don't want to begin importing a font. Now here, you're going to have to choose your font again. So, so and this is choosing the font that you want to fix. So let me go in here. Okay, Frederick. And I am going to go in and start by fixing my Q. Now you notice that it aligned the Q with the bottom of the little tail there versus aligning it with the bottom of the uh, rounded O-ness here. So um, what you do is you just click on him and I'll tell you, one of the tricks here is if you hold down your control key, it'll move slower so that you can get it closer to that baseline in a more precise way. And yes, I am particular, and I really want that round part to touch the baseline there. And I find that by holding the control key, it kind of slows the whole process down. Similarly, on the lowercase q, I want that rounded part of the Q to touch the baseline. So we're going to do that. And then the P, same thing. And then I'll have to go back and fix some of these other letters. Okay, now, kind of take note. This is kind of the center line. If you remember from handwriting class, 
Okay, this is the baseline. And so if you imagine your apostrophes and your quotes are going to be roughly here. So let's see, that's one, two, three. Okay, so now let's go over to the symbols and see if we can go and fix those. Okay, now this, these are quotes that don't belong at the bottom. So you're going to want to align them over here roughly at the third line above the center and um, let's see. okay this is a period so that does belong there the dash now notice this this is a dash here uh, this belongs more at the center line uh, this is a comma and you can tell that from here you see how it's kind of below versus this being an apostrophe is kind of high up there. So we're going to put that again roughly at the third line above the center, roughly there. Okay, so you may now be asking yourself, why am I taking all this trouble to do this now when you could easily correct it after you've typed out your words? Well, the reason is if I fix it here, I have fixed it forever. Okay, unless you delete the font and you have to re-import it, it is now fixed forever. Okay, this is going to drive me nuts. If I like to use Frederick a lot and, and I'm having to fix the, the P and the Q and the J and the G, I will go insane. But now I can take my time and I can fix it once. Okay, now here again, this Z is going to drive me insane here. So we're going to just kind of move him down here. So now you may be asking yourself, what are all these crazy letters doing at the end? Well, I've learned through experience these ones were added on afterwards. So these probably had some problems that the designer needed to fix. They ended up on afterwards. Why they're light green, I have no idea. Okay, but I have figured out that these probably were fixed added back on they didn't end up in order but you will see that when you type them out they do end up in the correct order here so let's now save our font and I will show you um, let's save this here real quick I may have to go back and reselect this so that it will regenerate Okay, so we'll go back and then choose our Frederick number one inch and prove to you, see, these were the P, the Q that I fixed, the Z, uh, ooh, this is the Z that I fixed, this is the Q. Notice that the Q and the Z are now much better aligned in my opinion. We have our apostrophe, our quotes, uh, they are also better aligned than they were. The dash is actually in the center where it belongs, etc. So this is a great way to me to proofread your fonts, make sure that they don't have any abnormalities, you know, correct the abnormalities that you can, which is mostly in the vertical positioning. Um, if there's a bad digitization or extra stitches or whatever, you probably do need to go back to the designer to get that corrected. However, this is a quick way to uh, proofread it. Now, the other thing that I like to do is to take a screen print of this, save it as a JPEG, and let me show you why. Okay, so I'm going to show this to you in my SoCat software. Is the software perfect? No, but it's the more most perfect that I've seen so far. So what I've done is I've gone in and created JPEGs of all my different fonts. These are really poor resolutions. If I wanted a better better resolution, I'd go into you know Windows Explorer, or pull it up in a different software. But at least I can kind of see roughly you know what I've got in my embroidery fonts. It it does show a little bit bigger over here. You can see that Delicate Flower also has the uh, floating P, Q, G, and J problems over here. There's got some alignment issues here in some of the uh, uh, 
the symbols, but I can just kind of glance through and see, okay, you know, which ones of these are serif font, sans serif font, you know, kind of fancy font, kind of scripty font, that sort of thing, and I can get a whole lot closer to selecting a font than I could uh, just guessing or, or changing fonts or that sort of thing. So that's why I go ahead and take the time to do my own JPEG because oftentimes if you download the designer's one, they are even rougher than mine. So ultimately what I want to do is get them all uniform in the same blue color, and that way the only thing that's really different is either which symbols are uh, available, whether it has numbers available, and then the actual characteristics of the font. You know, is it kind of a cutesy font? Is it a scripty font? Is it a serif font, a sans serif font, and so forth? So this is how I use my alpha tricks to get what I want. And admittedly, I, I think it's uh, a little on the expensive side, just for the ability to kind of fix what should have been fixed by the designer. Nevertheless, I guess I am a control freak. I do like precision, and I want to be able to fix it myself, as well as fixing the names of the fonts and so forth. So to me, it was worth it. I think that, you know, it kind of depends on your personality and how much time you want to put into this to determine whether it would be worth it to you. But I just want to show you how we do it over here. Thanks for watching.